feature presentation. Welcome back to another Untitled Movie Conversation. I am one of your hosts, Matt Rohrbeck, alongside. He's allergic to tomatoes, but he is tomato meter approved. Eric Marchin. Cheerio, Matt. How are you? <laughs> uh, yes, today we are going to react to the first mo- full uh, Marvel Studios Moon Knight trailer starring uh, Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke and more. Um, the Paul yes, Schrader verse has finally yes. <laughs> entered the MCU. And we have uh, both actors from the before trilogy now in the MCU. And yes, the last two Paul Schrader movies, the leads are co-starring in Moon Knight. I just recently watched The Card Counter, mostly because I watched this Moon Knight trailer and I had it rented on Apple. And uh, you can hear about my thoughts, Eric's thoughts on that on the latest episode of the Untitled Movie Podcast, episode 111, which is live now for you guys over on the Untitled Movie Podcast channel or on YouTube. You can just search for Untitled Movie Podcast. Uh, Eric, we are in year two now of uh you know the mcu uh disney plus shows we just had the one year anniversary of wandavision so far every show has featured uh familiar characters i think this is the first uh disney plus mcu show that is about a completely new character and doesn't seem to have you know any strong ties to characters that we know uh that we know of right now uh, what is your anticipation level for Moon Knight and what you think about uh, the trailer that we got during Monday Night Football this week? <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt. Did, did you uh, watch Monday Night Football for the trailer? Because I sure no, did. No, I did not. I did. You did? Really? I did. I had it on, yeah. In I was this like, day and age, I'm just one of those people that'll go on Twitter like, like, like when 20 minutes after it's it's on yeah. there and I'll be like, okay, I'll watch it that way. I, I think I was just... I was lying in bed and I was like, okay, there's nothing else on right now. I know this Moon Knight trailer is coming. I haven't watched a football game since the last Super Bowl, which is usually the one football game uh, I watch every year, um, mostly for trailers and different things. So I was like, "Ah, I might as well throw it on. So I watched it in really horrible CTV, like 480p quality on uh on my bell five stream so yeah i did watch monday night football i don't even know who was playing i forget I think but, it was but yeah to answer your question um on a scale of moon night to moonlight i would say that my anticipation is uh mac tonight um in terms of just okay, like sure. where i am i i i don't know like the trailer didn't really do much for me with the exception of that i i really do like oscar isaac and i'm willing to give the english accent the benefit of the doubt because i know that the character has multiple personalities so yeah knowing that um i think like that put upon british accent will play a role within how the character the presents yeah. himself in in the first couple of episodes um but i can also understand people watching that trailer and not knowing who the character is because i i I don't really know too much about that character's origin story anyway so thinking about how he'll kind of play into the marvel universe as you mentioned it almost looks like they're starting to maybe introduce you know the supernatural elements into the storyline like not just dr strange dark universe baby yeah well (laughs) but but blade like i could see mahershali's blade character somehow connecting in there and especially we have the gail garcia bernal werewolf by night halloween special that's coming even with with black knight and eternals like it it kind of feels like this could be the kind of they're doing their own dark universe (laughs) yeah and they'll be successful at it and 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 maybe even Doctor Strange into the multiverse of, of madness will kind of dovetail nicely. And that's probably also why Moon Knight's up first of, you know, the, the new year of, of MCU uh, series. Um, mm-hmm. Because a lot of people, I think, thought like, oh, maybe Miss Marvel was going to be the well, first. Well, originally Miss Marvel was supposed to come first. Yeah. Right? Like Miss Marvel got announced for last year, um, or that was the rumor. 
Um, but I think it did originally was supposed to be late last year, but because of the pandemic and how everything got reorganized, Ms. Marvel kind of got punted. And now it even looks like She-Hulk might come before Ms. Marvel. So um, the rumor is that it will go Moon Knight, then She-Hulk, then Ms. Marvel, then uh, Secret Invasion, right? And am I missing anything? There's probably a whole bunch. Guardians Christmas special is this year. That Halloween special might be this year as well. Uh, or is Guardians Christmas special next? I think it might Christmas. be next year. So it, again, like it lines up with right. Guardians too. Because but Guardians like, is next year, right? So yeah, I this was leading into it. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you. I, I think it's intriguing. Having I like I like a lot about this, but I agree with you that the trailer. I think some of it is interesting. Uh, I know the Moon Knight character a bit from when I was reading comics about 10 years ago, when I got back into them, I started getting into Marvel stuff and I read a lot of secret Avengers and secret Avengers. Moon Knight was a part of that team knew nothing about the character. And then I picked up the Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev series. And I, I barely remember reading it, but um, I, I was sort of familiar. I knew he had multiple personalities. I knew that like, basically this thing took him over at night or the moon cycle kind of thing. And he became this vigilante and uh, vigilante. I don't know. I, I got an accent there for a second. Fancy boy. <laughs> um, I have a, a British accent poking through. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm still excited for it. And I think what I'm most excited about is that it's a brand new character to the MCU. It doesn't look like it has like baggage or has to have strong ties to what's going on. And it is looking like it's going to carve out its own little kind of corner of the MCU with these kind of, you know, dark universe characters like the vampires and werewolves and, and different things like that. So uh, I'm totally down for that. And yeah, on top of that, Oscar Isaac rules, Ethan Hawke rules, um, you know, the cult angle with, with him is like, it feels like we've seen that a lot in, in especially TV shows and things like that. But I'm curious to see how they tackle that. And if he, I'm assuming has some sort of supernatural power, but I'm kind of with you where I don't know much about the character other than that very simple thing of like, yeah, he has like Mark Spector, uh, who is his main personality was a, uh, kind of a uh, he was in the army and he was kind of a gun for hire kind of guy and then he gets i think either possessed or something by a, an egyptian god and then uh, and brought back to life and that's how he gets these powers and then he starts you know developing these multiple personalities so um i think there's some cool stuff in there um we didn't get to see like a ton i still feel like this feels like a teaser but it, i guess it feels like a second teaser because we had that little disney plus uh day thing i like the look of moon Knight. i think it's kind of cool um but yeah i think what i'm most excited about is that we're starting to get into fresh and new territory in the disney plus shows because like they were hit or miss and we've talked a lot about them like i know both of us loved wandavision and and i think we liked loki quite a bit and uh and then you have on the other end uh, things like uh falcon and the winter soldier and what if and um hawkeye missing hawkeye that kind of you know, varying degrees of enjoyment. Like, I don't think any of them are bad per se, but um, I am very excited to follow a new character. Yeah, and I think maybe as well, there is a little bit of apprehension because of Eternals also partly taking place in England and, yeah. and sort of how that was kind of set up with, with Gemma Chan's character in contemporary England. And when you see that again and like... That Even movie didn't work as well, and so I'm I'm hoping that with this, like at least it'll kind of be fun in terms of the genre elements and kind of play up some of the supernatural stuff, and maybe it'll have some horror elements in there. But um, it did also weirdly remind me of some like some of the imagery um, with the costume and that one god that's kind of like you know jumping out at him in the elevator sequence in the trailer like yeah. it feels very much inspired like or like neil gaiman inspired yeah like it, it kind of has like that sandman kind of <clears throat> um look to it <clears throat> so i thought that was kind of interesting as well um and then also the 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 costume um reminded me a little bit of um uh 
the phantasm in, in the Batman movie. So yeah, just that I saw kind of you look. tweet that. Yeah, it does have that look with the face mask and kind of like a mummy wrap kind of thing too. Of uh, mummies alive. On. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, that's the Egyptian moon god Khonsu. Yeah, uh, who has this like beak kind of face and like it, it. I think the design is really cool. Um, yeah, I like some of those horror tinges then. Um, his psyche kind of breaking at times where you see the flash in the mirror and, and, and things like that. So yeah, I think leading into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is probably the the nice little kind of, okay, this is the it's kind a of primer, vibe. Right? Gonna, yeah, a primer is a perfect word of like, this is kind of the vibe we're going to go for for the next, you know, at least for the month of May, I guess, or, or uh, March into April into May. But uh, I guess April into May, March 30th is when the series premieres. So um yeah, I mean, I, I again, yeah, I, I'm intrigued. Uh, I don't know if I'm completely like, like, holy shit, I can't wait for this. But I think everyone involved, at least on the cast side, and I mean, we talked about it on the most recent episode of the Untitled Movie Podcast as well. But um, Gaspar Yulel is that Yuli yeah. Gaspar Yuli. Yuli. Um, unfortunately he's playing Anton Mogart and Midnight Man in this series. And he unfortunately passed away in a skiing accident, uh, the day of the recording that we're doing. So, uh, we don't see him in the, in the trailer. Um, but just kind of a, a you know, as just a day after this trailer premieres that, that really horrible news. So that's really unfortunate, but I'm hoping his role is really great in this just so he gets, you know, uh, uh, just I, this might be the last thing that we see him pop up in really. So, um, and other people who we see, um, we don't know like a lot of the cast of this, right? Like we only really know Oscar Isaac and even Hawk for the most part. And then, yeah. And Gaspar um, Yuli as yeah. well. Like, it, yeah, it, it seems like they are kind of holding some of this back and maybe like, even just looking at, like it's it's interesting on on IMDb it says that George Clooney directed an episode so that was debunked. Oh, there was it, it's rumors. still on there though, which is interesting. I know IMDb is weird. Like I don't. It's like anyone can go and edit that, and that is still a rumor that he was in Budapest or Budapest when they were shooting, and there were rumors that like people saw him on set and stuff like that, and um. That'd be really interesting. I don't think so. Like, I think it's pretty confirmed that uh, Mohamed Diab and uh, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead directed the whole series. Like, uh, and we know Benson and Moorhead, we saw Synchronic at TIFF a couple years ago. They directed The they, Endless Spring. Yeah. yeah, they're they're kind of, um, they actually have a movie at um, Sundance, uh, Something in the Dirt, which they star yep. in as well. So um, they're kind of, you know, I don't want to say up and coming because they're 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 very much in in sort of the milieu of it right yeah. now. But they're um, you know fan favorites when it comes to genre filmmaking. So um, you know maybe they'll add something to um, <clears throat> that in terms of their own style, and and hopefully that'll pop out a little bit. But yeah, I, I just saw that George Clooney's name was on there. It was like. Oh no, are we going to get an episode of this show that is just no. going to be a very kind of generic middle of Maybe the road? Maybe he shows episode. up like as a in the cast, but that would be shocking. But like, um, I don't think he, I, I think it says Mohammed Diab's directing four of the episodes and Benson and Moorhead are directing the other two. So kind of like what, what happened with Hawkeye with Burton and Birdie did half of them. And oh God, who the other director that did Hawkeye, I forget, but um, that's kind of like, I still prefer, I know it's probably impossible, impossible because of the scheduling and stuff, but I always do prefer when like one director uh, does, does the whole, whole thing. Yeah. Um, but we haven't got that a lot. Like even Loki, um, I think had multiple directors as well. Right. I or thought Kate Heron all... directed all of them. Did she direct all of them? Kate or... Heron directed all of Loki. Yes. Yep, you're correct. Which yeah. is like, again, and WandaVision. Because um... that was her, I remember with Kate Heron, like that was her pitch. Like it was her story yeah. outline as well. So. Where a lot of these have like a different showrunner and then they bring in. And like Matt Shackman directed all of WandaVision too, right? Yeah. So you're seeing the shows that we liked the most had one consistent kind of director. 
yeah. on them. And then right? they had all then, like obviously they were working within probably a writer's room and then also they had had like Kevin Feige coming in and and being sort of a probably a consultant on on the continuity of it because that's interesting as well as like when you have like everything I've heard with sort of the shows is that they're allowing creative types whether they be writers or producers or directors come to you know feige and the rest of the marvel studios crew and pitch them ideas <clears throat> for series and be like okay well this is what i was thinking of doing with this character and within sort of the framework of what you know the 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 bigger machine is of it all and i think that's interesting and then going back to like you know having the consistency of you know, one voice directing it all the way through and whether or not that filmmaker has a distinct style or not. I do think that, you know, you get a consistency overall with what the series is in, in, in any case. And it kind of breaks up, um, sort of the, not only the style, but the story structure, if you bring in more than one person, or it just kind of adds, uh, less of a, a, a sort of an overall arching sort of story and it becomes more episodic if you bring in like multiple directors and you saw that a little bit with with Hawkeye and you saw that with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Even though bit. it was Kari Skoglin, Skoglin yeah. uh, directed all of the episodes for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So the only ones that had multiple directors were Hawk was Hawkeye. Oh, and um uh, cause I just went back and checked everything else. So cause Falcon and the um, winter soldier mm. felt really disjointed at times, but I think that was a lot of because of COVID and how they changed. Remember there was a rumor that they changed that whole storyline about like the virus that was supposed to be in that show and stuff like that. So I feel like maybe they had to rework that in the edit, like quite a bit, which is why it kind of feels a bit disjointed. And then uh, I think with Hawkeye, uh, it was Reese Thomas was the other director on on Hawkeye. Um, split the duties with Burton Birdie, and now you're seeing like Moon Knight has multiple directors. She Hulk, I think Kat Koro is leading the directing team. They say so. I don't know um, who else she just uh, uh, directed. Uh, Marry Me, which comes out this year. Um, so yeah, it, it's interesting. Like, I mean, the approach on each one of these shows and as they've learned from year one, like it'll be interesting with Moon Knight and Miss Marvel being new characters. And then, you know, uh, I guess She-Hulk to an extent too, even though you have ex other characters showing up, but, um, and yeah, the Guardians Christmas special is this year. So, and then the rumors are Ironheart, Armor Wars and more, the Halloween special we're talking about, Echo all kind of maybe next year or in the future. So yeah, they're carving out this interesting, like uh launching platform for certain characters. Like it's interesting who's getting movies, who's getting TV shows as well, but it seems like um, this is probably a good fit for, for Disney plus. And um, I wonder if that, I guess you'll see these characters, like you said, maybe show up in blade and, and different things like that moving forward and using this as a launching pad. So yeah, I'm excited. I thought the action was cool too. And, and the editing seemed interesting, like in the way that like we'll be kind of from Mark or Steven's point of view or Moon Knight's point of view of him coming in and out of these kind of dream sequences and, and things like that. And not knowing exactly what's real, what's not is, is kind of cool. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Like anything, like I think the Marvel shows, I will always look forward to them, even if they like uh, are seemingly sort of inconsistent or don't stick the landing. But um, and I don't think they're quite at the quality of the movies, although I did love WandaVision and Loki more than a lot of the movies. So I think it's just going to depend on the property, really. This does look more like a movie, though. And even I agree. with casting Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke, you know, you have these two kind of indie darling actors in this big sort of, you know, tentpole series. It, it, it's weird because like, it, and I don't mean this in, in, in a negative way, but 
when you look at the other shows, a lot of the actors that are working on them are actors that have worked in both film and television. So it kind of makes sense that like when you see, you know, those actors doing the shows, it's like, okay, like I get why they, they, they're focusing a whole season on Loki one, because he's one of the more popular villains, but Tom Hiddleston has done a lot of TV and kind of alternates between the two where, Oscar Isaac has done that as well, but Oscar Isaac's film career is maybe more prominent than his television, you know, like show me a hero is a great, you know, mini series on, on HBO, but, uh, or, or, you know, the, the scenes from a marriage HBO series as well, more recently, but he's a guy that like, you look at like how in demand he is in, in Hollywood, just being in Dune and the card counter and, you know, all this probably, mainly because of inside Lewin Davis kind of making him kind of a, um, you know, uh, an interesting kind of actor to cast for, for any filmmaker after that movie, but it does have this movie kind of quality to it. And I do wonder though, that like, a sh- if this would have maybe been better as a film than, than a series, because like, if it's going to be six episodes in total, it, it kind of feels like, maybe it would have been better as like an hour and a half to two hours than, you know, basically. And that's kind of how we felt about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, right? Yeah. So like it's, it really is going to depend. And, you know, I'll, I, we've always leaned towards, you know, films over TV. Although lately I've been getting into more TV just because of the state that we're in and I've been watching more. And then I've been going, man, there's so many shows that I missed from great directors that I just didn't go back and and watch just because it was like, oh, I'll get to it. And then I never get to it that, um, yeah, I'm with you. I, I do feel like this feels a bit more cinematic and it's interesting watching Peacemaker on HBO Max, which, um, I do feel like the Marvel TV stuff doesn't quite look like the Marvel movies, but there's something about HBO and HBO stuff where I feel like maybe it's they don't, especially James Gunn on that series, isn't using as much green screen or, uh, you know, CG and stuff like that. So they can shoot on location and stuff like that, where it has this, I don't know, it feels like it has a higher budget or looks better in my in my opinion than a lot of the marvel stuff and i don't know if it's just because like the amount of cg that are in a lot of these marvel properties and then cg is very very expensive to do so if you're trying to do cg on a tv budget even though i know the budgets of these are 200 plus you know million dollars but you got to think that they're either putting 200 plus million dollars into a two hour and 20 minute movie or they're putting it into six hours of a TV show and that budget gets spread pretty thin and they have to work even quicker than the movies. So like, I feel like a lot of the special effects and stuff don't quite look like, like premium quality. And I think that's the thing that Disney is still trying to figure out with Disney plus on both on the star Wars side and the Marvel side for these like big prestigious, like, shows because i i feel like you watch something on hbo and like even a game of thrones even if we didn't like the last couple seasons like the production value on an hbo show i feel like is still so much higher than a lot of this disney stuff well even watchmen right yeah watchmen like it has a premium quality to it that i don't think i've I've felt yet, even though I really like WandaVision and I felt like that was such a special moment because it was the first one and and it was so weird and just like, I really felt like each week that felt like an event, but in Mandalorian to an extent, but even then, like it just, it, it's missing that like big spectacle kind of feel that even like small HBO stuff feels like, like things like the white Lotus or like, even smaller dramas feel like big deals on HBO. And I don't know whether that's because they rely on putting all that budget into going to elaborate locations. Like the last of Us series is shooting for an entire year. They're shutting down Calgary in parts and dressing all these locations. And yeah, there's CG and blue screen, but it's usually just to like, you know, for the far background and stuff like that. And they're still building these big sets. And I know Marvel's doing that to an extent on certain things in, in Atlanta and their sound stages and stuff like that, but it's always feels like a soundstage 
And I guess that's kind of, but he, I do like the look of this to your point. They seem like they shot a lot of it on location in Budapest, right? Which I feel like. Yeah. Now is, um, now is it helps. all taking place in Budapest or is there stuff no. that's taking place in England as well? Because so if you look at the trailer, um, that one, uh, and shout out to Eric Voss at uh, New Rock Stars. A lot of the times, I try to record our stuff before I watch his stuff because he catches so much more, and like he's he's the best at this kind of stuff. But uh, he did point out in his breakdown that that uh, museum is in the MCU in London, but it's really a museum in Hungary. Um, they just dressed it to look like a a fake museum in London, um, and then also the scenes with Ethan Hawke. And everyone bowing to him is also in Hungary, but they made all the text German. So that looks like it's taking place in Germany. So it looks like we will. So it's a Euro around. trip, basically. Yes, exactly. Like we'll bounce around Europe. And I think some of it probably will take place in Hungary if they're shooting the majority of the, the series there. But uh, they'll probably make different aspects of Budapest look like different areas in in Europe. So um now, interesting. to your point, I wanted to go back quickly. Do you think another reason why the series, these Marvel shows don't look as good compared to like HBO series or other um, cable shows or, or anything that is not sort of not related or, or has other um, sort of like a like a bigger framework? So with like the MCU, do you think it's partly because they're kind of on a, a timeline to kind of get these shows out to coincide with other films or series as bridges. So it's like, okay, well we have to have, you know, this film or movie out around this time because this other film or show, which will have connective tissue will be out in the next year and a half. Yeah. I don't think they're necessarily spreading themselves too thin yet. Although we're get, I, I'm a little worried about that because you know, they're buying up these sound stages in Australia, Atlanta, you know, Europe and, and London or, or wherever, and just like shooting them as not as quick as possible. But um, yeah, I, I don't know what it is because I don't think Disney has the same problem with like some of their Hulu stuff because I know people really love Dope Sick. We have Pam and Tommy uh, coming soon and even from the trailers and stuff like that, like those have a premium quality to them that I feel like they are willing to do. And I think it's more something that you've always talked about, Eric, and that um, that it's almost like they need this consistent look between all the MCU stuff where it all has the same kind of looking cinematography and the same kind of, again, they it, Kevin Feige is very good at what he does, but Kevin Feige produces all of these things, right? So he knows how to get it done on time, on budget. And, you know, that happens to be a familiar kind of cycle of how each one of these are probably created. Right. And like, there's all the people poking fun at the, we didn't love the Eternals, but you know, the cinematography in that movie, I know a lot of people love and it's because Chloe Zhao went out and shot on location and, and people are like, Oh my God, this looks great. And they're like, who would have thought you went to a location instead of like, wait, there were outdoors. <laughs> yeah. Instead of trying to create it on a computer. So, I think it's a little bit of that where Netflix has that problem too with a lot of their original content where they're like, no, these are the cameras you have to use. It has to be in Dolby Vision, 4K, HDR. Here's how we do it. Please do it this way instead of the freedom of someone going, you know what? I want to shoot this on film or I want to shoot this in 4.3 or I want to do whatever. And like, it's like, no, it has to be an IMAX. It has to be shot with these cameras. Uh, here's the things that you get to play with. We'll let you kind of be creative in the story and things like that, but this is how it looks, right? And I feel like maybe that's kind of what's happening. And and the more of these shows that they produce and the more movies they do on top of it, like you got to think last year we had one, two, three, four, five Marvel shows. And I think we had five movies too, didn't we? Or four? Um, yeah, and that was also making up for the fact that like, you know, the Some year before and, yeah. we didn't really have anything and, and the last Marvel movie before the pandemic kind of put everything in lockdown and, and, and delayed a lot of stuff was Spider-Man Far From Home. And so now to your point, like we've gotten the movies and shows and they've kind of, you know, 
in succession have happened one after another and we've gotten new characters within the feature films with Eternals and Shang-Chi and you know that has been kind of divisive we you know as you already mentioned we didn't really care for Eternals but Shang-Chi seemed to open the door for this next iteration in phase four that is introducing uh, a new generation of heroes and you saw a little bit of that with both Black Widow as well and uh, Hawkeye and sort of bringing in sort of other versions or iterations of characters that are going to be taking up the mantle of previous um, sort of versions so that is interesting as well and like what all of this is leading to, because if you think that, you know, like end game, you know, maybe the end game wasn't necessarily the end goal in mind, but Thanos was presented pretty early on. And the idea that and guardians, yeah. And even just the first Avengers movie, it's like, okay, the idea that we're going right, to have true. Captain yeah. America, we're going to have Thor, we're going to have Iron Man, And we're going to build to this movie where all of them share the same screen together. But also, again, going back to that tonal thing where it's like, okay, well, why do they all look and feel the same? And just even the aesthetic, because the the world of (laughs) Thor is so much different to the world of Iron Man and Captain America. But they all have this kind of like saturated televisual look to them. And it's a shame because like the first two Iron Man movies were shot on film and they looked somewhat unique compared to where those films have gone since then. And since going completely digital. So you have to wonder, you know, with this, what is, what is, cause Kevin Feige really hasn't said like, what is the, the next kind of like, what are we leading up to here? You know, like yeah, I think what well, is next? I think honestly, Multiverse of Madness could be the thing that finally gives us an idea of what phase four is leading into. And like, because usually at the end of each phase, you would get an Avengers movie, right? So yeah. are they going to go back to that? Uh, you'd think they will. Maybe it won't be till phase five, but like, you got to think it'll just be called the new Avengers, which is what a comic, the comic series was called. And, um, or you're going to get Avengers secret wars is my prediction. Like secret wars is a huge comic crossover that involves the multiverse and everything they've been doing. Not everything, obviously some are ground level stories like Hawkeye and, and to an extent Falcon and winter soldier and stuff like that. But, um, I think eventually you're going to see this multiverse thing, um, be the, it has to be the thing that they're leading towards and with all the, and, but then you throw things like Moon Knight to bring it back full circle. It's like, how does, how is Moon Knight involved in what's going on with Falcon and Winter Soldier, which is what's going on with the multiverse stuff, right? Like, or are there going to be three different crossover kind of movies that will eventually lead to a big, big end game Infinity War style crossover or something like that, right? Um, I think the Secret Wars know. thing would kind of make sense, though. Yeah, just because, that's like, usually... even with the rumors with Doctor Strange having, like, a bunch and of cameos, it's almost like, okay... every Marvel movie ever, right? Yeah, well, maybe they could use those in a Secret War movie and, and almost, like, gauge yeah. how people react to those cameos. And, like, say if, you know, Hugh Jackman shows up or yeah. Nick Cage or, you know, even There's... Chris Evans again as... Yeah. as, as uh, johnny storm like it could be like okay well it's almost like a weird survey film of like okay like who do who do audiences gravitate towards in this doctor strange movie that we could also put in the the secret wars film because i remember with the um the the 90s animated spider-man movie there was a series where or a part of this i think it was like season three or four where spider-man is like on another planet and he has to pick um his allies and so he picks like captain america and the fantastic four to go up against uh dr doom and things like that that's that is the secret war storyline it's called battle world and like all the marvel heroes from all the different universes like I don't, I'm not super familiar with it. And I know the Russo brothers, they've talked about how if they were going to come back, like Secret 
Secret Wars is their dream project. So I think that's the plan, dude. Like it's Russo brothers are going to come back after they do this Chris Evans uh, spy movie. Who the Gray Man with Ryan Gosling, uh, Ryan Gosling Anna Darmus, yeah. and Jessica Henwick. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, that'll do fine. Um, but I do think that they're not finished. And if they're going to do another Avengers movie, that's who they're first going to call. And like, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's already like a handshake agreement or an agreement that that is happening. And well, that, after cherry, I would, I would um, think that they'd be like, we need to go back. <laughs> yeah. We have to go back. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Evans comes back uh, because there was that whole article. Remember that he signed on for at least two more MCU movies and we don't know what those are and he's denied it, but of course he did. Um, well, I so. could even see like in maybe with the supernatural stuff or the multiverse stuff, even Robert Downey Jr. coming back in a cameo and not yeah. necessarily doing like any sort of action or what have you, but just coming back in some capacity, like in just again, like a walk on appearance, mm -hmm. even if they're because doing if you're Secret Wars the and multi, yeah. I would not be surprised. And like, have you read all of these rumors for multiverse of madness? Cause like, I can't, no, what, what's, can't what's some be. of them? Like, so anyone we will wrap up now. I know we're way off topic from moon Knight. We're both somewhat excited for it. I, I, I of course I'll be excited for any Marvel studios projects. So I'm, I'm all in obviously, but anything that begins um, with uh, Oscar <laughs> Isaac chained to a bed, Gerald's game style <laughs> yeah. is all right with me. Great hairline. Um, he does so have great hair. Leave if you don't want to know any of the rumors for Multiverse of Madness. Bye, everyone. Um, so, Eric, I've been I, I, I've been reading everything because I can't help myself, but some of it is so obscene to the point where I'm like, this can't. None of this can be true. Like some of it I can think is true, but like a lot of it I don't. Everyone's like every Marvel movie and character you've known will probably can't be in this movie from like that's non MCU stuff. So there's a rumor that the Illuminati will be part of this movie. And they're a Marvel group of different Tom heroes. Hanks from the Da Vinci code. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're a group of heroes from, you know, around the MCU and in the multiverse that all come together and like secretly, you know, just like the Illuminati on, on earth secretly control things or secretly protect things. Right. Um, and like there are rumors that like, you know, from each universe that we've known from the Marvel one, whether it's the Fox universe or the fantastic four universe or uh, the inhumans or whatever, like th all these people are going to show up as the Illuminati in this movie. So you're going to have like uh, Patrick Stewart's Charles Xavier, uh, what's his butt who played Mr. Fantastic in um, the original fantastic four. Oh, uh, Ian um, Gerford. Yeah. Yeah. And like have all these people show up as the Illuminati. Oh God. If people... Nick Cage is there, I will I'll yeah. be well, happy. Th there are rumors that Nick Cage's ghost Rider might be in the movie there, but like, I think Wesley this is Snipes. when I start, <laughs> when I start calling bullshit is like, people are just throwing out every Marvel character that's ever been in a movie that is like, they're going to cameo. And then there's other ridiculous stuff. That's even more ridiculous where they're like, Oh, um, uh, Tom Cruise is going to show up as Iron Man <laughs> because that was a rumor in the nineties that he was going to, well, play so it was him. Justin so was like, Timberlake, um, who so was like attached to it at one point. Yeah. So they're like, Oh, he's going to show up as a variant of Tony Stark, Tom Cruise, or they're like, um, what's his name? John Krasinski is going to play Mr. Fantastic, but he didn't sign on to do a new fantastic four movie. He's just playing a variant of Reed Richards. And I'm just like, that shit doesn't make any sense. You're just like, I think then you're getting too too crazy to the point of like why would you introduce reed richards a different version of reed richards that if you haven't introduced the one yeah. that's going to be in, in the, the mcu yeah like i, I could like, understand people being like okay well maybe you know they they bring in like eric ban as the hulk or something that's like a rumor too I that mean, like yeah. edward norton's not i don't think is gonna happen that was a rumor too i read uh and and terrence howard i like i don't think those guys are gonna do it because they had kind of you know they, they burn out, yeah. bridges and yeah had falling out and, and and things like that but it's like okay like i i could see them having fun with if they're going to do the fantastic four thing like why not do the chris evans thing or even weirdly yeah. make fun of like <laughs> like i mean I, I think it'd be too soon if we're talking about moon knight but like oscar isaac is apocalypse yeah, showing up which would be bizarre 
Um, but it, it would almost be funny if they were calling out like the doubling down thing. Cause you could even have Michael B. Jordan and Chris Evans come in as, as Johnny, as Johnny Storm. Storm. Right. Yeah, which so. I, I don't know, man, but like, I'm very curious and I hope people don't get like too high of expectations and then they'll just be disappointed. But like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Patrick Stewart thing is true. Or even um, Hugh Jackman, Hugh I think, Jackman, would be yeah. something that, like, everybody wants. And if if they've done what they've done, I, I don't want to, because, again, I know some people probably haven't seen it. But if they were, what they were able to do in a recent film <laughs> has gotten people excited and those expectations kind of are raised because of that. And you're thinking, oh, well... If this that movie, can be canon, if that, yeah. So why not, you know, bring in all this other stuff, you know, is Ben Affleck's Daredevil going to show? That was also, this is how obscene the rumors are getting where it's like, that was a rumor. Like basically it started to get to a point where I'm like, okay, this is actually a good thing for me because I don't know what the hell is true. I started seeing every Marvel character you've ever seen in a non mcu movie could potentially show up in this movie and i do think you're going to get some of that um i mean dolph lundgren's punisher could show up for all we know um i think you might even get deep cuts like that but like i i don't know like even the trailer which i pointed out had all the different marvel logos that weren't just the mcu marvel logo right like they had the fox logo from the x-men movies they had the fox logo from the fantastic four movies they had the raimi spider-man marvel logo like like toby mcguire showing up i wouldn't be surprised again um because of raimi directing or even um, bringing in andrew garfield like i i think that like with the response of spider-man no way home yeah doing as well and specifically for andrew garfield like he was he 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 seems to have benefited the most out of all yeah. of them, but yeah. you're, you know, Toby Maguire having that connection with, with Sam Raimi, Raimi um, it, or one of the Doctor Strange variants will be from the Raimi verse, like, but it might be Cumberbatch, it just like, but because he was referenced in Spider Man Two, right? Yeah, um, or you get a different actor that would play a variant from the Raimi. But you think like, you think that like when they were talking about him in No Way Home, that. Toby Maguire's Peter Parker would have said like, "Oh, I know." Uh, this is a good point. A guy but, like that, or hmm, that is a good point because he is referenced in J. Jonah Jameson does reference him, but maybe he's he he references Stephen Strange as Doctor Strange, not necessarily the Sorcerer Doctor Strange, right? But or sort of, I don't know. We're getting too in the weeds, but anyways, Moon Knight, March thirtieth. <laughs> leading straight into uh doctor strange in the multiverse of madness so uh, i think like the week of its finale is also the premiere of doctor strange so uh, much like hawkeye leading right into spider-man no way home we're getting a little bit of a break from marvel stuff but um march 30th we'll be back with moon knight so uh thank you everyone that was oh venom fun. is another one where like i could see them i think garfield that's where he shows up is is in venom stuff yeah i think they retcon that to say that that's part of the garfield verse now that he's kind of back in the swing of things <laughs> was that your venom impression <laughs> the um yeah and uh i think garfield probably gets involved with tom hardy and venom so i don't know if I think you keep that separate than the Doctor Strange stuff, but um, right. But we'll then the man. Morbius thing as well is still like up in the air with that because of the Michael Keaton uh, appearance in the trailer, and then also the the Spider Man design on the wall being the yeah. one that is referencing Tobey Maguire's Spider Man. So it's it's like where like like it is it is a rabbit hole kind of situation like you can you can get lost in it for hours and like kind of piecing together what's going to happen or My, you can just yeah. let it let it happen as it is and like yeah i'm sure there's going to be a lot of cameos and easter eggs we've heard that there's been numerous reshoots on doctor strange to include some of that stuff and I think it's because of Spider-Man No Way Home kind of tracking as well as it did. And when it came out, the reception of it being so strong that it's kind of and like... it's fan service and it's cheap, but it's still 
fun, right? It's yeah. something we haven't really seen in these types of movies, like crossovers like this. And we're at a point where there is a history that you can celebrate and, you know, it'd be uh, amazing involve. if it was just a, if Dr. Strange was just a backdoor pilot for like new mutants to come back again, <laughs> who knows? And anything can happen. Um, Thank you all for listening. Uh, if you like this, please go check out the Untitled Movie Podcast over on that channel. We just did our 111th episode where we shit talk Tim Hortons and uh, McDonald's McChickens. And uh, we did talk about movies a little bit, but um, mostly the the history of the Jackass movie franchise. Um, and then also our reviews channel. We'll have reviews up for Yellow Jackets, uh, the first three episodes of The After Party, Peacemaker, uh, tragedy of Macbeth and more. So go ahead over to untitled movie reviews, or you can just uh, search us on YouTube at untitled movie podcast and, uh, we'll pop up there. Uh, our letterbox is untitled underscore movies. That's kind of your one-stop shop for everything, uh, untitled. So that's probably the easiest spot to find everything. Um, as always, my name is Matt Rohrbeck. You can find more of my work around the internet, mostly at untitledmoviepodcast.com. And you can follow me on all those social medias at Matt Rohrbeck. And I'm Eric Marchin. You can find more of my video reviews at rogerstv.com slash cinemascene and on the social medias at EM6211. Until next time. I hope Moon Knight's uh, catchphrase is you've been moonstruck. And then he throws out a copy of uh, Moonstruck directed by Norma Jewison. Sure. Bye, everybody. <laughs>